Jesus talk on the Marxist theory of the state. The state is just fundamental to capitalism and uh, socialism. Everybody talks, almost everybody talks at some time about the state because it's the basis of political discourse. Uh, we've divided the subject of the state, what is the state, into four parts. First, what is the state? Second, what is the form of the state? Third, what is the content of the state? And the fourth, which is most important, which has priority, the form of the state or the content of the state. Now, let's go back to the first part. What is the state? Well, Marx and Engels and Lenin say that the state is an organ or an instrumentality or a weapon used by one class to hold down another class. Engels, Frederick Engels, 19th century Marxist thinker and writer, uh, wrote about this concept, this notion of a state in his book, The Origin of the Family, private property, and the state. Uh, Marx uh, dealt with this concept of the state as an organ by which one class oppresses or exploits another class. In a number of his works, the most important is the Civil War in France. Um, this idea of the state being an organ by which one class holds down another class contradicts the idea that Abraham Lincoln uh, proposed at the end of his Gettysburg Address, I think it was 1863, where he was talking about the government, which is a, just a synonym for state, like regime. Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln said that the some governments or other people, by the people, and for the people. Uh, obviously, uh, Lincoln's view of the state, including the state in the USA, uh, counters or opposes the view of Marx, Engels, Lenin, Fidel Castro and Ho Chi Minh, my favorite Marxist, I specify them because there may be somewhere between 500 to 1,000 versions or interpretations of Marxism. And I'm trying to uh, uh, look at the world from an outlook of Marx 
uh, Ingalls, Lennon, Fidel Castro, and uh, Ho Chi Minh. Uh, uh, that's my where I'm coming from. So, um, if if we were to try to give a paraphrase Marx, the Marxist concept of the state in the Lincoln-ness, in Lincoln's language, it would be a state is an organ of the class, by the class, for the class, rather than of the people, but, you know. Uh, okay, okay, we're back. Um, let's move to the second part, the form of the state. What is the form of the state? Uh, this is often a basis of discussion because you can say the democratic form of the state is the most popular form of the state. And it is a form uh, which people feel justified in going to war to uh, establish. But what is the form, whether it's democracy or something else? Well, we can say that the form is the way uh, the state manifests itself. The form in no way affects the essence of the state. And in part one, we've said that the essence of the state is a weapon or an organ or an instrument by which one class holds down another. That's the essence. And whatever form the state assumes, its essence remains the same. Uh, there are a number of forms that say democracy, autocracy, uh, monarchy, uh, oligarchy, uh, combinations of some of these or all of these. Um, give me another idea, maybe an example of form and content. Let's take uh, the uh, H2O, H2O, the water. Now, H2O can come in the form of water. Water is a form of H2O. H2O can come in the form of um, steam. Steam is one way in which H2O can manifest itself. Uh, H2O can come in the form of ice. The state is the same way. It has a variety of forms in which it can manifest or express itself. But in each instance, whether it's steam, or water, or ice, H2O remains the content of the substance that we're, or the subject that we're talking about. That's the relationship uh, between form and the state. Um, now, it's, many people argue that uh, the only acceptable, the only respectable form of the state is democracy. Um, that uh, the uh, state is either a democracy or a dictatorship. 
And obviously, Marxism cannot agree with this position, that uh, this point of view, that the state is either a uh, democracy or a dictatorship, because the definition which Marxism at least the Marxism of Marx, Engels, Lenin, Fidel Castro, and Ho Chi Minh, the view that they have is that the state is a dictatorship, whatever it's for. If it's a democracy, it's a dictatorship. If it's an autocracy, it's a dictatorship. Why? Because the state is an organ by which one class holds down another class. And a dictatorship is an organ by which one class holds down another class of people. So what there's there's often squabbles based on uh, the form of the state. And we can try to resolve, or not so much resolve, but, you know, calm down this, the squabble over the form of the state, is just to say, well, uh, in proletarian and bourgeois uh, discourse, uh, there's a difference in the definition of a dictatorship. Uh, it is conventional in bourgeois ideology to distinguish uh, a democracy from a dictatorship. But it is similarly convention, conventional in uh, proletarian ideology to identify a dictatorship and democracy or any other form of state. They're all, as long as it's a state, uh, it oppresses people. Uh, this is not only the view which Marxists uh, hold, at least the type of Marxists that identify with Marx, Lenin, Ingalls, Fidel Castro, and Ho Chi Minh. You know, this is really the main view of anarchism, that the state is an organ by which one class holds down another, and therefore the state is a dictatorship, because anything used by one class to hold down another class is a dictatorship. So, we can see that the dictatorship can assume various forms, democracy, autocracy, monarchy, oligarchy, uh, combinations of the above. So that's pretty much uh, the form of the state. Now let's go to the content of the state. Uh, just as the form says how to exercise state power, the content says who, what class chiefly exercises state power. In the USA, it's the millionaires, the class of millionaires, the bourgeoisie, that chiefly exercise power. But content is not just a, qu a question of who, chiefly exercise power. It's also a question of for whom power is chiefly exercised. And the rich, the millionaires, the bourgeoisie in the USA today and other bourgeois countries chiefly exercise state power for themselves. You know, you can see that that the regime, the state in the USA, the, the state in the United States, <laughs> are, um, 
is now in a phase, a stage of uh, huge budget cuts. And often the initial deal is the budget cuts would be balanced between the working class, middle class, bourgeois class. But when they're actually enacted, it's mostly the working class, the middle class, and the, uh, if you try to put some of the burden of balancing the budget on the rich, the millionaires, the bourgeoisie, the capitalists, uh, 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 they say you can't raise any tax taxes on <laughs> the rich. Not one dime. Not one dime. But all kind of charges and benefits are withdrawn from the working class and the middle class. That's something new, because particularly now with the decision of the bourgeois regime in Washington, D.C. under Obama, uh, I put it different. Uh, I used the whole concept. The bourgeois regime, the content, with a diff democratic form under Obama, you know, that uses, that, that puts... Uh, a lot of uh, the idea, uh, they just uh, <coughs> cut out uh, unemployment insurance compensation for 1.3 million workers, mostly, you know, well, not all working class, some middle class, but where is the corresponding burden on the rich? <coughs> not, matter of fact, they're giving them money with quantitative easing, but I'm getting away from the state. Uh, and we'll get back to the state. So the content is, the content of the state is determined by what class chiefly exercises power and for what class is power chiefly exercised. You take in Cuba, Cuba in Cuba, um, you take there, well, 97% of the people who are all uh, elected or appointed public office are workers. 97% are workers. So if you ask what class chiefly exercises state power in Cuba, uh, you got to go with that 97%. That's the workers, the working class, you know. Uh, um, so, and if you ask, what class, for what class is power chiefly exercised in Cuba? Again, it's for the working class. Uh, most of the national income of the country goes to benefit the working class. It's a poor country, but what they do have is distributed chiefly in favor of the working class. So that's uh, the content. Uh, uh, let's deal with the fourth and final part of our talk about what is the state. And that fourth part is which has most importance, which has priority, form, over content or content over form. Well, you know, uh, there are certain people who make uh, democracy an absolute, and they say no state is legitimate unless it assumes the form of a democracy. Um, um, Lenin, in a book, The State and Revolution, argues that bourgeois states have a great abundance of forms. Take the bourgeois state in the USA. 
it has its form. There's another bourgeois uh, uh, state north of the USA, Canada. It has a different uh, form. I mean, they both call themselves democracy. Uh, but uh, there are quite a few bourgeois states which uh, have not assumed a democratic form. For example, you say the uh, bourgeois state in Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's certainly bourgeois. I mean, almost everybody in the state, and not just a million there, but a multi million there, you know. Are, uh, but uh, it doesn't have uh, a democratic form. It has a monarchical form. So Lenin drew from this variety of forms that the bourgeois state may assume the idea that the proletarian state will inevitably express itself in a variety of forms. Now you take, for example, the proletarian state, Cuba is one. Now people will argue over whether Cuba is democracy. Uh, that would entail first a, uh, that we explore the concept of democracy, and we intend to do that in the future. But right now, let's briefly just say that one of the reasons why uh, people say that Cuba is not a dem democracy is that uh, its elections are not multi-party. Well, the, uh, its municipal elections are multi-candidate. It's not a party running against a party. It's a candidate, four or five candidates running against four or five uh, candidates, multi-candidates. And the, um, the, the winners, the officials elected at the municipal level are, uh, appoint uh, people who go on to the state level, the provincial level, and the provincial level appoint people who uh, sit in the national uh, legislature, and the national legislature appoint people who actually exercise state power, like the president, the vice president, people who sit on the Council of State and the Council of Ministers and so forth. This is called the parliamentary form, where, where the voters don't pick the top executive authorities, but the legislative bodies pick the top executive authorities or officials. Uh, is that way in Canada? That's the way in, in, in the UK, the United Kingdom? They call it Parliament. Picks the Prime Minister, not the people. Parliament. Uh, and so the U.S. propaganda says uh, Cuba because it uses the parliamentary form of democracy rather than the presidential form of democracy where the people, well, actually in the U.S., the people don't elect president. The president is elected by some electoral college body, which is intermediate between the election of the president and the voting of the people. There's a, there's a trick uh, in it, you know. But people uh, in the U.S., they, they like to overlook that. Uh, but they say that uh, it's a dictatorship in Cuba because Fidel Castro is not directly elected by the people of Cuba. He's elected by the parliament, uh, the legislature of Cuba. And that's true, but that's the parliamentary system and most democracies in the world today run on the basis of the parliamentary system where 
the parliament it has a lot more power. All of the, uh, almost all of the uh, officials or members of the parliament that come out of the parliament and so forth. So the question still is, which is most important? the form of the state or the content. Assuming that the contrast or the comparisons is clear, the difference between the form and the content is, is clear. Well, in, 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 in bourgeois ideology and in bourgeois policy, clearly the content takes precedence over the form. You take one state uh, in uh, Latin America, Venezuela, there's more accountability to the people, to the voters, than any other state in the Western Hemisphere. Because it's the only state in the Western Hemisphere where the people can kick the president out. They can't do that in the United States. They can do it during re-election. If it comes up and run for re-election, they can turn him down. But we're talking to kick him out before his term expires. In Venezuela, they can do that. And it's not just a, uh, a lot of words on a piece of paper. In uh, 2004, August 15, 2004, the people of, uh, uh, of uh, Venezuela tried to exercise that power. But they decided that they wanted to keep Hugo Chavez, the late uh, Hugo Chavez, you know. So, uh, um, if, if that is the case, the founders, George Washington, all those guys, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, all of them, uh, they figured that the content of the state would be more secure if the power to remove the president was vested in the legislature called Congress, U.S. Congress, uh, so that, that only he, that only only the Congress could, what they the word is, impeach uh, the president. But down there, both both the uh, Parliament and in Venezuela and the people can't remove it. So, uh, even though Venezuela has a more democratic, if you look at democracy from the point of view of accountability of the chief executive authority to the people, Venezuela has a more democratic regime than the USA. The USA is trying to overthrow <coughs> Venezuela to change what? Not the form, but the content. They don't like it. And this content is so important. How do you change the content? Just seizing power is not enough. You got to get class conscious proletarians and class active proletarians into the state. A majority of the legislature, majority of the judiciary, uh, the top and senior positions <coughs> of, the, uh, of the bureaucracy, of the executive power, uh, and this is very difficult. First of all, you got to have class conscious workers and politically active workers who can assume these high offices, public offices, governmental offices, and so forth. But the, the policy of the bourgeoisie worldwide is to eliminate, to destroy any state and every state with proletarian content. Now they say that they're against uh, North Korea which is a proletarian state, they, with a monarchical form of all things, a proletarian state with a, mon, a monarchical state. It's a state of workers, but they govern themselves using a monarchical dynastic 
a form, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, the real, uh, if, 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 if North Korea got rid of the monarchical form, the bourgeois regime, the imperialist regime in the U.S. with a democratic form will still be hostile, will continue its class struggle, its imperialist struggle against North Korea. Similarly, if, if Cuba was to uh, abandon its present form, this, which some people, many people call democratic, for a more conventional uh, democracy, the bourgeois regime, the imperialist regime in the U.S. will still uh, maintain hostility toward Cuba as long as the content of the state remains proletarian. In, uh, in Venezuela and Ecuador and uh, Nicaragua and uh, one or two others, uh, maybe Bolivia, uh, what we have is not yet a proletarian state, but a passing of state power from one class, the bourgeoisie, to another class, the proletariat. And in every instance, the bourgeois regime in this country and other countries, the U.S., Canada, U.K., Germany, uh, is uh, reacting to the presence of these transitional states in transition from bourgeois to proletariat with savage hostility. A 50-year uh, blockade in the case of, of Cuba. So I think that covers what is a state. And uh, um, we'll stop here. Um,